Welcome to episode 46 of Successful Demo, each episode analyzes the theory of Carabao Guy Express of one more release cards. Well, Kampala Ascendant has given HB some new legs, and we're gonna start exploring that with the next ice, the final of which is, of course, its ultimate form, Nyx Diamond. Well, this is, this is something I've been anticipating for a long time. Finally, a Nyx effect that actually scales nicely with number of res Nyx ice. This one has the unique effect of it uh, being one credit cheaper to res uh, for each extra Nyx ice that you have already resed. So this is basically a mid to late game ice. Let's look at its numbers. Pretty damn good I would say. For a sentry, you don't get too many that are that high strength and have that many subroutines. Uh, the market rate for uh, an ice with this ratio is roughly 7 credits, making it slightly better than a Nancy which is in the Jinteki faction, uh, which if you remember is 7 to rest but for only 5 century strength. Um, of course, 3 subroutines as well. So uh, basically my verdict is if you have 3 next ice res, you will res next diamond for 7 credits, that's kind of the baseline. If you have 4 or more next ice res, then next diamond starts looking really good in terms of bang for your buck. Unfortunately, the downside is that the subroutines are generally awful in my opinion. The brain damage is usually irrelevant unless you can force the runner through multiple times, that way they will flatline on hand size. But the problem is, you are not resing this early, so you will find it a struggle to induce multiple runs on next diamond. Don't forget, you never want to rest this early, being so expensive and all. Um, and yeah, uh, the effect of trashing one installed runner card any card, it doesn't have to be a program, it could be a resource, it could be a hardware, that's an incredible effect to have. However, it is no substitute for an end the run subroutine, which is something that you're gonna see is lacking in most of the next ice. Let's put all the next ice that are uh, legal in the current framework side by side and see what sort of archetype we. Wait, no, 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 no. What is this steaming pile of poop doing here? Let me rephrase that. Let's put all the good Nyx Ice side by side and see what we can make out of this. So the first thing we realize is, as I mentioned, we are scarce on Nyx, uh, end the runs, and that's a big problem because this means that we can't viably construct a deck that only attempts to score agendas. Uh, there are better ice suites for that. Instead, we have to take advantage of the other subroutines that we have on offer. And I think you'll notice that the common theme here is actually the damage. Uh, that is something you want to build towards with the next ice because next gold uh, potentially deals unbounded amounts of net damage and next diamond of course helps that out with brain damage. Now next sapphire doesn't deal damage exactly but it allows you to recur other damage cards in your deck because of the second subroutine which allows you to add up to X cards from archives to HQ, a very powerful effect. Uh, and because you notice so many subroutines are so powerful, I think it is very, a very obvious synergy here is Marcus Batty. Uh, just, yeah, you know, firing any of these subroutines off against uh, with Marcus Batty can be a huge swing in the game, if not winning you the game completely outright. Uh, one thing you realize about these next ice is that even though they scale as more and more get res, they are not particularly taxing. They are not, they don't have particularly good numbers in the sense that, you know, aside from Nick Silver, the rest don't actually gain any extra strength or subroutines as uh, you rest more of them, making them uh, inferior when it comes to taxing the runner out. If you want ice that scales into the late game in terms of strength and or subroutines, go look for advanceable ice in Wayland instead. They do a much better job of that. We can't build a taxing deck, so the only option left is, as I mentioned, the one-shot kill with next goal. So that's what we're gonna aim for. We are gonna try to kill the runner with Batty into gold. Um, but we have a lot of extra consolation prizes out there. As I mentioned, Batty into Sapphire, allowing you to draw your entire archives into hand is pretty cool. Batty into the last set routine of diamonds, also extremely powerful, allowing you to get rid of hate cards on the runner side or key cards that are preventing them from losing the game or maybe even just trashing a program. At a baseline level, it's not too bad. So a lot of good Batty targets, a lot of ways to combo out for the win uh, between Marcus Batty and your ice, and that's going to be our game plan. So in the early game, what we aim to do is to basically amass a board state, get a bunch of next dice on the table, 
and get a lot of money so that we can combo up because our combo is going to involve an often unseen card in Surat City Grid. I think a lot of people will play Nick Slice with Ginger Grid just because it's the newer card, but really the problem with Next Ice is more of getting all of them res, not so much getting them on the table. Surat City Grip helps us with that exactly. With Surat down, uh, our combo phase will consist of us resing Surat and then jamming lots of stuff in the remote. Rashidas, NGO Friends, Marcus Batties, all these can be res for zero credits and allows us to get the surat triggers on centrals which is very important that way we can res all our central next ice along with all the remote next ice of course surat city grid will be on the remote and then once we have all the next ice res our next goal will be charged up ready to for the kill with marcus batty and all the other next ice will be very painful as well our win condition obviously is for the batty kill but even if that doesn't happen because the runner ignores our remote, well, we'll just sc score 7 points through the remote the hard way. So this is the deck list. I think the most interesting aspect of it is that our restricted card is actually Mother Goddess. We really want ex as many Nyx Ice as possible in our deck. The Nyx density needs to be high, so Mother Goddess provides us that, as well as a crucial end run subroutine that we so sorely lack. Everything else is, you know, just good stuff cards, some recursion, some ways to mitigate a gender flood and distract the masses. But otherwise, this seems like a solid deck. Let's see if we can make the combo magic happen in our playthrough. <music> Today we are up against Adam, one of the worst possible matchups we can ask for. Um, I already identified a gender flood in HQ as one of the uh, biggest downsides of playing this deck because if you think about it, the early game is all about installing your next, next dice and installing Rashidas and NGOs in the remote. You cannot score agendas early because you don't have enough end run ice and your next ice are pretty crap. Um, so you want to be holding agendas in your hand, bolstered by your CI hand sized. You do not want uh, the runner to be an Adam that access, has a permanent uh, multi-access on HQ for the entire game. That is just, you know, a uh, recipe for failure. Thankfully, we are off to a good start. We have drawn absolutely no agendas um, at all in our first 10 or so cards, which is really amazing. Uh, considering we are running 9 agendas. So even though our opponent smells blood here, there's actually no blood to be had. The, w the best they can do really is to trash my NGO front and Marcus Batty. But they don't. Instead, they access my Surat City Grid, which they are too poor to trash, and the IPO. So we've stabilized in the early game. We have some good money. We are going to uh, get the Rashida going and then play Hedge Fund. Now this is the other weakness of this deck. Without enough ender runs, uh, you just can't fire Rashida off, which basically cuts your draw power in half. Uh, you can only lean on ultraviolet clearances. The Rashidas are kind of blank. It's unfortunate. The best I can do here really is to force my opponent to pay 3 credits to trash the Rashida. Uh, but that's good for them because it means that I'm not getting my Rashida. Uh, imagine what a Rashida would do here. It would draw me into more next ice. It would allow me to draw into agendas that I can start scoring. Instead, my opponent, all they need is an Omakua to get uh, into my remote. And that didn't really cost them too much tempo, really. So, not very good for me. Even though I'm rich, I'm not really setting up my board state. Hopefully, we draw into some good ice quickly because we need to increase the taxation power on the remote uh, in order to get things going because we're going to draw into agendas pretty soon. Uh, and we need to put them somewhere. So I draw into Restore here. Restore doesn't look very good right now. Um, I was tempted into restoring the Rashida, but my opponent would simply break the fetch out 2 again for 3 credits. Uh, not really worth it. Then we draw again. Hey, that's a piece of ice. Okay, that goes on the remote. Uh, now that's something we can play with potentially. Alright, uh, my opponent goes, uh, sets up RNG key and can now uh, do nasty stuff on RNG. I don't think they know that RNG is Nyx Diamond just yet, so I might catch them off guard here. Unfortunately, uh, they perform a HQ run, seeing two cards, stealing my elective upgrade. Oh, damn you. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so they knew, they kind of knew I had agendas in hand. They managed to snipe it, and now, alright, what can we do? Alright, next goal is potentially a very powerful piece of ice that we can fire off even though we have no next 
you know, other next ice, we can potentially, you know, get rid of the freaking armor core, which is causing huge problems for us, allowing them to challenge my remotes freely. So they attempt to challenge my remote here, but they're gonna hit uh, the batty. And this is where we fire the batty, we win the Psy game, so we fire the trash program subroutine to kill the armor core. Leaving them with no way to actually break the next goal, I'm able to fire the trash program subroutine again. Sniping the and RNG key as well, or rather sniping the fem from the H, uh, from the grip and trashing the RNG key. So that was a huge run, a uh, huge victory for me, huge swing in my favor as I basically crippled the breaker options. Uh, all of them are now in the bin and RNG key is gone, so the engine is also gone. Right, um, even though I had no other rest next ice, uh, next goal was only power one. That's all I needed, because I won the side game, I was able to destroy their only means of breaking Nick's goal, which allowed me to get the double program trash. Uh, if they had logic bomb out, uh, I would not have been able to trash RNG key or get the one net damage off. So that wasn't a flat line, but it was the tempo swing I needed, because that relieves pressure on HQ, and allows me to continue setting up my combo. Uh, this Surat City Grid really needs to go into the remote here, but I also really need to play the Ultraviolet from my hand. I want to draw cards, I want to see next ice. I haven't been seeing enough ice, uh, given that I've drawn through basically half my deck at this point. So I think I made the mistake here of installing stuff instead of playing the Ultraviolet. I really should be playing the Ultraviolet here, but instead I'm inducing a run by using Restore to restore Betty and then installing the sales team. I was tunneled into installing the sales team here because I was afraid that my opponent would simply run HQ and see two cards stealing agendas and getting to match point. Uh, as you know, Ultraviolet can easily draw you lots of agendas considering that R&D is pretty dense with them. So I think that was my main mistake here because, um, yeah, I'm, it's, like, I'm not gaining forward tempo and that's a problem, you know? By making this play, it's not like I can score the sales team here and I'm still poor, so what am I going to do this turn? I draw into a Vitruvius, I can't put it anywhere uh, because I spent all, uh, a lot of time last turn installing the Surat. So another good play last turn would have been to install Betty, or rather restore Betty, install sales team, advance sales team. That way I could get rid of the sales team this turn. Uh, instead, what happens here is that I'm forced to take a blank turn, basically playing IPO, taking money, uh, which is more than enough time for my opponent to set up the second Omakua. They now have three Omakua counters and are able to double access HQ, which has an agenda in it. Thankfully, they miss, but they hit a batty from my hand. So that's the other mistake. I should have put a batty in the remote from my hand instead of using Restore to restore it from the bin. Uh, the rationale for me restoring there was I wanted to use it before my bin was full of batties uh, because restore can remove, will remove uh, duplicate copies uh, of the same card from your archives from the game. Uh, so that was my rationale there, but that again was a mistake. I should have just installed batty straight from my hand because HQ is the weakest server right now uh, due to the multi-access available. So I, sh you know, uh, rather have the bat in the remote than for my opponent to trash it for free. Um, right, so now I need to show up HQ here, so I'm having a very uh, pathetic Nyx Silver on HQ, which doesn't really tax my opponent enough because I only have two res Nyx Ice. The, the remainder of my Ice are fair child twos. So this seems iffy, but I'm really maxing out all the good Nyx Ice, unless you want me to play Nyx Opals in their place, which is pretty awful. Uh, this is the best you've got. And here I'm just relieving Agenda Flood by playing my Distract the Masses. Really just buying time because I just don't have the time to score the sales team. If I take a downturn to score the sales team, you bet my opponent would run HQ as they're doing here and fetch all the agendas. So yeah, unfortunately I wasn't able to get rid of the last agenda on HQ. So uh, all I can do is watch as my opponent runs HQ, spends 6 credits and steals the Vitruvius from my hand, putting them on match point and I'm still on zero points. This is looking really bad for me, but I guess it's kind of expected. The worst thing is they didn't steal, steal my Vitruvius. Instead, they crippled me by taking away my Marcus Batty. I really needed the third Marcus Batty there. Now there are two in the bin. There's only one remaining on the remote. I really needed a Marcus Batty to fire off next Sapphire on HQ so that I can uh, fire the recursion subroutine, bring some cards back from archives into hand, perhaps give me a chance 
uh, as I'm able to pad my hand out with cards and hopefully reduce the pressure on HQ. Instead, now my opponent runs HQ here and has a very good chance of winning the game outright. Uh, also a good chance of just snatching an agenda and go going to match point. I'll have to get really lucky here um, on the 2 and 4 access. They access elective upgrade and hedge funds, so the game's not over. But I've basically lost this game now. All my 3 point agendas are stolen, so I need to score 4 regular 2 point agendas to win. That's not going to be easy given that they're rich, they have logic bomb, they can hammer HQ like nobody's business. The best I can do here is to fortify my remote and advance the Vitruvius here. I now am leaning very hard on my remote to make things work for me. Um, I want the remote to hopefully uh, trash my opponent's programs, do a lot of net damage. Uh, no, no. I mean, who am I kidding? This remote is entirely porous. I need to save the batty for um, the next silver and the run, right? Because even if I fire a next goal for two net damage, it's not going to kill them and they're going to reach the base and steal the agenda for the game anyway. So here, I'm relying on the fact that my opponent can't get in my remote because they have no armor counters, but they fork me by running archives. With so few Nyx Eyes rest, uh, I haven't managed to get a Surat City Great Combo going because my opponent has pressured me into resing my ice on centrals time and time again, and I just uh, don't have the Marcus Batties that I need to res on the remote. I don't have time to put NGO fronts and Rashidas in the remote because I'm too busy pumping out those agendas. Um, as a direct result, uh, I never got a Surat City grid combo to fire. And because of that, with not enough next size, my diamonds are bloody expensive. 8 credits to rest this diamond on my archives. All my money. If I res it here, I go down to zero. I can't defend my remote. They logic bomb in and win the game. Can't have that. So I... Uh, as much as it pains me to do this, I put Archive's eyes for a reason. I wanted to catch my opponent out. They would definitely, uh, you know, have to spend a logic bomb here uh, to get past the next diamond. But, uh, yeah, I can't afford to go down to zero credits just to do that. Uh, I have an agenda, the winning agenda in the remote. We can't rest the diamond. So I'm forced to concede all Makua counters to my opponent, who starts farming them up again, and now sieges R&D. Nick Silver won't keep them out. They have the one counter needed. Next Diamond, again, I can't res it. So the perfect worst ice possible for R&D. Neither of these ice work. And if it's an agenda on top of R&D, there's no way I'm keeping them out anyway. So there's no point. I'm just going to no res both ice and hope that they are bluffing. Hope that it's not an agenda on R&D. Maybe it's a trashable card. No, no, it was the winning sales team. Of course, I mean, R&D was super dense with agendas. It had to happen. Right, so if you were expecting a Big Bang finale, I'm sorry to disappoint. Nope, we are not going to see a next goal into Marcus Batty flatline. And I think it's important that we sit down and talk about the reasons why this is the case. Next goal and Marcus Batty is a powerful combo, make no mistake. There are very few counters on the runner side for it. However, the real problem is the rest of the deck that props this combo up, that supports this deck, is just mediocre. And for this reason, uh, when up against uh, the best of the best runners, it's just not going to make it the, the cut. I mean, even against something like an Adam. Uh, you, you saw all the problems this game. Most notably is that the next eyes don't provide any value in the early game. In fact, most of the early game, I was riding on the Fairchild 2s, uh, which, which were doing an okay job at defending my HQ, uh, at protecting my remote. Because can you imagine what would have happened if the ice on my HQ was not a Fairchild 2, but was something like a Nyx Gold, a Nyx Diamond even? Uh, Nyx Sapphire wouldn't have been any better. It is equally as taxing as Fairchild 2. Uh... Yeah, Nick Silver would have been pretty pathetic because it had it would have had only one subroutine. I didn't have enough other Nick uh, Ice Res. So if you think about it, Fairchild, the Fairchild tools on my HK and Remote were actually the best Ice you could ask for in my deck because all the rest of the Nick's Ice were poop, were garbage. They had no value in the early game. And because of that, as I was forced to rest my Nick's Ice early on instead of having time to set up the Surat combo, uh, eventually, by the time I got a Surat on the table, there wasn't really much Nyx Ice on the table left worth resing. Not to mention that 
Uh, when my opponent started running archives, as you notice, hard raising the next diamond was a very tough sell. It was way too expensive. Uh, you know, it was just a chain reaction of events because I wasn't able to get the Surat combo up. Next Diamond became too expensive and wasn't worth resing, so my defenses just fell apart at the seams. It was a snowball of doom, I should say. Uh, also, another important thing you noticed was that I didn't get enough forward tempo because I was relying on Rashida uh, to draw me into the more next ice to get me money, but nope, instead my opponent trashes them easily because I can't defend my Rashidas. Again, uh, had my next, uh, had the Fairchild 2 on the remote that was protecting my Rashida being any other ice, the Rashida would have been easier to trash. So, next ice don't defend you early on, and that's the biggest problem. If you are running a deck that is almost 100% next ice, you are gonna suffer and crumble to early pressure, which is exactly what happened to me. Uh, thinking back to pre rotation, for those of uh, you who weren't with us, there was a Nyx Ice that was rotated out called Nyx Bronze. Uh, and that would have been a way better Ice than Nyx Diamond. In fact, I would happily swap out all three copies of Nyx Diamond with Nyx Bronze, even though it means that I'll be left with no sentries. Simply because the Nyx Bronzes show up your early game. That is what you so desperately need as a Nyx deck. Something to keep the runner out early on, uh, and then it scales as you go along in the game. Uh, as you res more next ice. Next diamond doesn't do any of that. It doesn't scale in strength in the late game and it doesn't protect you at all early. Uh, and even late game when it supposedly is at its finest, next diamond, uh, being this gargantuan piece of ice, runners nowadays still have so many ways around it. My opponent, for example, had two solutions. They had uh, the Omakua, which was a very powerful universal breaker. All it needs is six counters to break diamond for cheap. And of course, there's Logic Bomb, which means that uh, I can almost never uh, get the subroutines to fire on next diamond. So yeah, it's just very lackluster overall. Uh, not That's not to say that this archetype in general is garbage. It's just not something I write home about. I think if you were to give this deck a go, and I would encourage you to do so because it's pretty fun admittedly, um, I, you might actually find more success with me. And I would say that's mostly because you would be playing up against a runner that is perhaps not so competitive or that perhaps is more passive. You know, some runners like to set up a lot loud nowadays, build their big rig before running, and those are the kind of runners you can prey on because those runners will not interfere with your central ice, meaning that you can set up yourself, get the Surat combo going, and have a very strong late game, uh, with uh, Marcus Batty being basically uncontestable. Against more competent comp uh, opponents, more aggressive opponents, I think you will find that this deck loses its luster very quickly. As bad of a matchup as this was, um, I think you will also struggle against other similar runners, other similarly aggressive runners. Uh, for example, Anox who run Rebirth into Omar, that's the problem, they can keep hammering your centrals. Uh, diversion of funds is absolutely terrible because you are already poor as it is, losing even more credits is uh, really bad. And of course, Rumor Mill, everyone's favourite, most hated card. Uh, yeah, so again, it's not a bad deck. You probably will have some success with it if you play it at the lower tables, but as far as I'm concerned, I think there are better homes for next diamond. I just haven't found them yet. Uh, as I theory crafted, it seemed like this was the best home for it, but in practice, turns out not to be the case, and now we know why. Have you experimented with diamond yourself, and have you found it to be good? Disappointing? Interesting? Share your deck list in the comment section, let me know how your playtesting went, because I probably won't be covering any more Nyx Ice uh, decks, so hopefully y'all can contribute uh, to how you, you know, uh, and have a nice community opinion on how on uh, how Nyx Diamond and the Nyx Ice Suite in general fare. Would love to hear from you, but until next time, it's always uh, as always, it's ha uh, happy night running from me, goodbye.